Scientists have recently found a way to amplify the benefits of exercise for your health and your weight without actually having to change anything about your exercise routine. And that is through the power of placebo. Today I'll be going over a scientific study on how you can actually harness mindset to get more benefits from the same amount of exercise on your weight, your body fat percent, and your health. Hey there, I'm Mish and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD. And by day, I conduct and publish studies of my own. And by night, I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And today I'll be talking about the power of placebo and how you can use it to boost the effects of exercise in a way that will help you reach your goals more easily. I talk about placebo effects quite a bit here because I think they are way more powerful than most people give them credit for. For example, a meta-analysis found that a lot of treatments and their good effects on us are actually driven by placebo. So for example, for depression, the benefits of antidepressants for depression have been estimated by a meta-analysis to be about 50% due to placebo. So 50% of the benefits of taking an antidepressant for improving depression is actually just believing that it will help you. And it's not just for psychiatric illness. This actually applies to a lot of physical conditions too. So for example, studies have shown that if you expose people to fake poison ivy, they will actually develop a rash from totally fake, non-irritating plants, just from the power of placebo. And today's study looked at the effects of placebo on exercise. And it's published in one of the top three journals in psychology, so it's a pretty good study. And the participants in this study were cleaning staff at several hotels. And for half of the hotels, the researchers did a manipulation that increased placebo effects related to exercise. And to do that, they first told participants all about the benefits of exercise, and then they told them that their daily activities as cleaning staff, so like cleaning things, actually counted as vigorous exercise. So it actually fulfilled the CDC guidelines for a very active lifestyle. So for these participants getting the placebo manipulation, they were essentially told that they were already living really active lifestyles, and this was not something that they had realized before. So they were told about how all their different cleaning activities were burning a ton of calories and gave them all the specific information on how much vacuuming burned and making beds burned and all that kind of stuff. And they also put up this information as posters so that they would be reminded every day that they were in fact living an active lifestyle because of their work. And the reason that this is a placebo boosting manipulation is that it was entirely aimed just at making participants believe they were doing more exercise. So nothing changed about their actual activity levels, but all the researchers did was convince the participants that what they were already doing was exercise. And for the other control group, all they did was tell them about the benefits of exercise without convincing them that they already were doing a lot of exercise. So it was just a neutral control. They didn't tell them anything one way or the other about their current activities. And the researchers looked at how this exercise placebo manipulation affected a bunch of behavioral and physiological parameters typically associated with actually doing more exercise. So they looked at body weight, body fat percentage, waist hip ratio, blood pressure, and then how much exercise they perceived themselves to be doing and also their dietary habits. And they looked at how all these parameters changed over the course of four weeks after doing the initial placebo boosting manipulation or the control manipulation. And first they found that the groups did not change their actual activity levels. So they did not increase or decrease the amount of exercise they did as a result of this manipulation. So any effects we get on all these other physiological parameters are not actually driven by changes in real exercise. They would have to be driven by changes in mindset about exercise. They also found that the participants did not report any changes in the types of food groups they ate or any dietary habits. And they found that their placebo boosting manipulation worked and had long lasting effects because at the end of this four weeks, the people who had been convinced that their jobs were very active continued to believe at the end of the study that they did a lot more exercise than they believed they did at the beginning of the study before that manipulation. So the people who were convinced and given the placebo boost about exercise did indeed perceive themselves to be doing more exercise, whereas the control group did not have this effect. And as a result of only four weeks of believing that their job was a good source of exercise, the participants in the placebo group lost two pounds on average, lowered their systolic blood pressure by 10 points, and had a lower waist hip ratio and lower BMI. And the control group, on the other hand, who did not get these placebo effects, did not show any of these benefits. In fact, whereas the placebo group lost a body fat percentage point 
the control group actually gained a little bit of body fat percentage, not in a significant way, but they did not get any benefits on their body fat percentage from the control manipulation. And now the question is why or how in the world this simple little placebo effect can cause such a big boost in the effects of exercise on our health and weight. One possibility is that it could be that our cognitive processes going on in our minds are actually directly influencing our hormones and metabolic processes to cause us to lose weight and have lower blood pressure. This may sound crazy, but actually just a few videos ago, I went over a study on how just your expectations of what is in a meal, regardless of what's actually in it, influence your hunger hormones dramatically. So if you're interested in that, check out the video after you're done with this one. And if you think it's too crazy to believe that mindset can be directly influencing hormones or metabolic processes like this, I don't blame you. <laughs> there are also potential psychological mechanisms that could be happening here. So for example, if someone is told that their lifestyle is already a very active and healthy lifestyle, this might move their self-concept more towards someone who is healthy. So just believing that you are more of a healthy person is likely to nudge you in a direction to make small, healthier choices throughout the day. So for example, maybe twice a week, the participants who now believe they're living an active lifestyle are going to choose carrots instead of cookies, and it's not quite salient enough for them to remember it when reporting their current dietary habits. So it could be tiny little nudges like that happening because of believing that they are now healthier than they used to believe they were. And another possibility is, honestly, I'm not totally convinced that the people in the placebo group didn't slightly increase their activity levels in some way or another. So the authors found that there were no significant changes in activity levels over the course of this study, but they didn't actually present the data themselves because it was a very short report in this type of very high impact journal, so not blaming them, but we are missing the actual data here because it could be that there was an increase in activity levels in the placebo group, but it was just ever so slightly too small or noisy to pick up in the statistical test. So it is possible that believing that they were doing more exercise made them approach their activities more vigorously or something or more energetically in a way that burned more calories and improved all these physiological parameters. Although one potential counter to that is that these women weren't actually trying to lose weight. They were just going about their lives and the researchers contacted the hotels and everything. So the fact that they weren't even trying to lose weight and may have still increased their activity levels or just burn more calories from this placebo manipulation is still pretty cool, I think. But from my point of view, it doesn't really matter how these effects happen, but the cool part is that they do happen. So whether it's that mindset makes you naturally accidentally exercise more without realizing it, or makes you accidentally unintentionally make healthier food choices, I still think that's pretty powerful and amazing given that you're not actually having to do anything besides just change your beliefs and how you feel about your activity levels. And if you want to apply this cool result to your own life, then I suggest thinking through your day and just tallying up all the different types of activities you do, whether it's going to the grocery store or walking from your car to work or walking up and down your stairs in your house, and just maybe even adding up how many calories different calculators would estimate you're burning from that activity. And then just believe that that activity actually counts for something. Because I think a lot of the time, the little things we do throughout our day, we just kind of discount as a baseline that doesn't matter. But what this study suggests is that, assuming you are doing at least a little bit of activity every day, then just acknowledging that activity and believing that you are living a pretty active lifestyle could actually make it a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way that improves both your weight and your body fat percentage, as well as your health. And for a fun little aside, I realize this is my 20th weekly video in a row. I have been literally working on my productivity and efficiency and organization for years to be able to do this along with my more than full-time job. So I'm very excited that I've now been doing this for more than a third of a year and hope I can keep it up indefinitely. That's the goal. And thank you all for your motivation and support that you give and encouragement. It really means a lot to me and helps keep me on top of the weekly videos. So thank you very, very much for that. And for another fun fact, I just finished knitting the scarf like last week and it's a gift for a family member, but I have to give it a test run first. So I thought I would wear it to be extra cozy today. I hope you found this video helpful or at least cool because I just think these placebo effect findings are really fun to go over. So I hope you enjoy hearing about them too. If you wanna support me in making these videos or wanna say thanks, head on over to my GoFundMe or my Patreon. On the Patreon, we've also got bonus content and the ability to weigh in on videos and make research requests. So if you're interested in any of that, check out the link up here and down below. If you like this video, please like it and share it to help get this information out there. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell below to stay up to date on all these crazy science findings. 
Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.